Hey guys, Tank here. We are live. I'm actually building a um, bamboo bridge. I found these bamboo um, skews, barbecue skews. Uh, they were at the Walmart from these guys and uh, turned out pretty good. And uh, they're actually 30 inches long. Uh, I did cut off the tip, the sharp tip at the end to make it a little bit better. Uh, I did already build two of them that were um, uh, only three of them. This one's going to be four. So you're going to go on the bridge. It's going to have four uh, with your trucks. And then on the other midway half through it, it's going to be narrower. So it should be kind of cool uh, in the sense that trying to put this onto camera. So here's the, uh, what it's going to look like. So this is the middle part. And then this is the other end. I still have to figure out, I still have to figure out what, how I'm going to hold this and how I'm going to do the leg and what is actually going to be the part that's actually going to go up uh, from this part. So it's going to be on an angle going up on here. And then these are actually metal wire, these metal wire here, 16 gauge, uh, 19 gauge actually. And it's all twisted. So it should be kind of cool because uh, it's it already started to rust. Um, this was in my shed. And it should give it a kind of a cool look. So this side is actually 30 inch long and it's going to be, um, uh, it, it's going to be on one side. The other side on this side is going to be four of them. So it should be, should be interesting and fun to actually go on this, especially to take pictures and all that. So it's just a different challenge that I'm doing for, uh, for my trails. So I need some wire. So if anybody wants to join me, send me a uh, quick email at the Tank RC, and I'll send you an invite if you haven't received an invite already. So uh, the Tank RC at gmail.com, and I'll send you uh, an email. Let me bring out the chat in front of me on my big screen so I have less problem. Uh, see you later, Razy Froggy. I hope you pop in later. He says he might. Uh, we got barbecue altered RC with us in the chat. Thanks for dropping in. And uh, Matthias RC also is in there. So yesterday I was using I was using three of them to actually put them together, but this time I'm going to use four. Uh, that means I'm going to have one spare. So uh, yesterday when I was actually pulling this wire out. Um, I was going about the size of this tool and it was giving it pretty good. So now I'm going to go just a little bit longer, maybe two inch longer and see actually what it gives me. So that aside, what I basically do is just this wire that's easily flexible and I bend it halfway. So, and then I can start weaving it onto there. And what I've done is I put some marks already um, pretty much at random, uh, four different spots that actually covers um, the whole length. So it's just random, but I made it, the other one, I didn't do that. So the, the wires are actually random and they're not the same on one side to the other, but this one actually made it a little bit better. So now we're going to uh, just take one. Put it onto there, put it where my mark is. And the other one I was doing probably one and a half turn with it. So I just grab it and I twist it one uh, half a turn. And then I take my pliers, put it onto the, where it actually turns. And then I do a complete turn with it. And this really tightens up this really tightens up the wire onto here that it, it barely moves, but it still does, but it's pretty good. And I'm trying to keep one and a half turn because it gives me the right distance in between here. So when I put the next one onto here, it makes it easier. Uh, the other one I noticed that if I do it all, all of them, it kind of gives me trouble to put on the next one. So what I notice it's easier is I do one here, do the, do all three of them. So let's cut more of these wires out. So 
Thanks for having us. Not a problem. I decided to do this today because it's Sunday. Uh, the weather is getting a little bit nicer outside, but um, still, I wanted to do this inside and to chat with you guys. The only time I do this is on Thursday night, uh, usually the RC talk, and I'm trying to get other people to actually come in here um, and do this. But there we go. RC Basher Boy did get the notice today. He was saying yesterday that he was not getting the notice. Just if you want to come in, um, RC Basher Boy, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, just check your email. I did send you an email. You should have received it. If you didn't, let me know. And if you do want to come in, I can send you an email. So all these three wires, I'm bending them. Asgard Studio, long time no see. I'm actually building a uh, bamboo bridge for the RC trucks. Um, I found these barbecue queues um, on uh, Walmart, and they're actually 30 inch long. So I'm actually building a bridge. I've already built half of it, and now I'm doing the other half. Uh, so, and while I'm building it, I decided to come here and chit chat with you guys. Uh, Matteo says, or, no RC, this uh, the hailstorm over there. Wow. No RC weather here. Hailstorm, snow and rain. Wow, that's not fun. So again, we'll do half a turn. And then I'll grab my pliers. And I try to turn the same way all the time. So we'll do half a turn again. So one and a half turn. Like I said earlier, this is going to give me the um, the right distance. If I do the twist all the same, by the time I do everything, it should be all equal. That does sound cold. Cold. <laughs> Thanks. Notification wake me up. Time to get up there. It's Sunday. Time to do some some work. Time to do some work on the uh, RCs and, and the stuff you have to do on the Sunday. And here's my fourth one. Sometime working in front of the camera is a pain because you're trying to put the camera in front of everything. And working with these wires, because they're, they are black and they are kind of rusty a little bit, really dirties up your fingers. People like wearing gloves, uh, doing this kind of stuff. I, I just wash my hands after. No dirt. Dirt didn't, doesn't hurt you if you take it off after and if you don't eat it. Mind you, when I was younger, I did eat a lot of dirt, like most kids. Who here, uh, when they were young, actually ate dirt? That's a good question. Uh, Matthias, I see RC says, just finished my Tamiya, Tamiya Monster Beetle. So was hoping uh, some great weather. Yeah. Sometimes when you finish a build and you want to go test it outside and just the weather is not cooperating. That's what happened when I finished off my uh, Isuzu. I wanted to go have fun, but weather was not cooperating. It was a lot of snow, so I decided to build a snow a snow wall and just crash through it. So first one done. It seems once you have the uh, first one done, it seems to go pretty fast once you have all your wires there. I keep it where my marks are. And these uh, barbecue skew stick, uh, bamboo stick, they are crooked a little bit. And uh, by tying them together like this, it really helps. It really helps straighten them up because you can see here it, it wants to twist. But by the time you put them all together, they kind of untwist themselves and make everything hold together better.
Barbecue says nice on the monster beetle build. So this is one one piece. Let's put the other piece on there. Hey, where's my darn a wire broke here at the end? At this end, I only have one wire. It kind of broke. Here it is. So I'm gonna have to be crafty on that one. I guess when I twisted it, I didn't twist it properly. Things we do for the trails. And again, there's just a different version of these wires that you can get. Some are stronger than others. Um, but when you twist them, you do have to be careful how you twist them, especially with the pliers. I went one full turn with this one, and then I'm just going to do half a turn to tighten it up against it. I did find a plane. Um, I did find a plane. Now I just have to build the uh, plane crash. Yes, I did find it. Now this one is going to be tricky because I have to fix the problem that the wire actually broke in it. So what I'll do is I'll cut it. I'll make myself a new wire. This one might be long enough. So I did find a plane. Uh, it's a pretty big plane also. I took some picture of it and put it on Facebook uh, saying, <laughs> I need a bigger RC room. Um, but it is going to go in the, in the back uh, and uh, for the trails. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in the woods or I'll keep it in the front yard where, where people actually come in um, to actually start the trail. I'm thinking I'm going to build an, a, um, a village there for uh, people to actually take pictures in the village as you come in. So gas station and a bunch of other stuff should be interesting to actually see. Hopefully these, this wire is going to be long enough to do the other one. Now I came up with this idea, but I've been looking at other bridges, bamboo bridge that what people do. There's a, you can spend a lot of work building these bridges. It's really cool. So there's the three pieces so far. And we're going to go on to put the fourth one. And that's what I said about make sure you twist them the, the right way because everything is the same distance all the way through. Uh, mind you, at this end, uh, because the bamboo does twist, uh, I will be drilling out some holes in this piece. Uh, this one actually had uh, three uh, uh, for the other side. Three of them, like here it matches. But what I'm going to do is on this side is going to have four. So I'll have to remark some different holes. And yes, I'm building a bridge and not working on my Scania semi truck. Some people are going to get mad at me. My son actually went on a live video last night building a Meccano RC car. Not RC, just a motorized car from Meccano. That was kind of cool. But he has issue of how to hold the piece, hold the little nut, and actually hold the tools and everything together. So 
it took him an hour to do three steps. So that was kind of uh, funny. I was watching him upstairs and I was seeing he was having issues, but he was keeping keeping it going. So that's that's good. So now we have four of them. So that should be really neat with the truck when it goes over it. Again, you can see that the bamboo wants to stick out, but once we tie it all together, it just pulls everything together. And hopefully we're gonna have some people that actually join in. I should check my emails. If you wanna join in, the tankrc at gmail.com and I'll send you a link. Uh, let me go there. See you later, RCI Basher Boy. It was a good stream last night that you had on yours Saturday night with RC Basher Boy. Check out his channel. Always a good time to see his bedspread and the truck on his bedspread also. It's not just a bedspread. Sometimes he does have new bread, bedspread. He does go shopping. There we go. Four of them are done. It does want to twist, but once everything is together and on the bridge, I'll be putting it better. So that looks kind of cool. So now what I do is I just cut off the excess at the end. And I bend it onto itself. So I bend it, uh, I bend it down like that. People should not scrape themselves or hurt themselves when they go by the bridge. And I'll, I'm trying to keep this on the inside of the bridge so the other the other side is going to be here so if people do rub their legs on it they're not going to catch where the uh the ledge is going to be i always think of that it's a truck bed i missed something there do 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 A drone shot, Asgard Studios in here. How you guys doing? We were, uh, I was just on the Canadian Drone Hub and uh, most of all these guys were there on the chat, on the chat and in the video. So, and while they were in the chat, I was actually starting to build this or gluing the other side. Come on. There, one done. Seems to go on forever. When I go like this, and this goes on and on and on and on and on. There we go. Put that aside for now. Get rid of my junk, excess wires. And we have DWG logging on to chit chat with us. Yeah, you won't hear just my voice. So I need four more of these guys. Hey, Dennis. How you doing, Frank? Good. 
So what are you working on today or what do you got planned? Uh, it's been a long night for my wife and I. I just got up. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, you should leave your wife alone at night, you know? <laughs> uh, it was another one of those late night trips. Oh, yeah? Are you on the road? No, no. It was for her. She's she's feeling better. Okay. okay. You're getting started a little early on some of your stuff for the course. Yeah. Well, I, I was at the Walmart and uh, picking up some other stuff. And as I walk through, I see these barbecue sk skewer stick and they're like 30 inch long. I go, ah, oh, this is great. I can do something with this. And, and I was, I was thinking about it and I said, well, why don't I build a bridge with it? So I was going to do four, four and four, but I didn't have enough. So it's going to be four on one side, 30 inch long. And then on the other side, it's going to be three of them. So it's going to be a little challenging, but it should be pretty good. But it's going to be. It'll make up for some axle width on some other trucks. Yeah. And then that's what I measured. I measured my uh, TF2, which is a very narrow axle. Uh, I measured my Winnebago, which is even narrower. Uh, and it will fit on it, especially on the one that has three. It's going to fit on the inside one. Uh, right. the, um, the TRX-4 is a little, little wider. That will fit. The only one that might have issue is a Wraith. Um, but the Wraith does fit on the outside. So I did measure it. The, the TX-4 is just under 10 inches wide, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the Wraith is probably going to probably going to fight to get across it yeah and that's what i tell a lot of people when they come here with the wraith i said my course is not designed for a wraith but if you want to run it run it but there is some um, um some things that you'll have to pick up your your wraith and and go over it because it just won't do the bridge it's going to be too wide so right. like i have one it's called the wire bridge and it's just a very thin piece of wire that goes across the bridge and you have to balance right on the wire. Um, a lot of people enjoy doing that, but if you have a Wraith or a TRX-4 with um, extenders on it, you can't do that. So with wheel, wheel wideners, a lot of people like those wheel wideners because they're thinking that they're going to have, they're going to be more stable on the trails. Uh, it actually affects the the track width on it now. Yep. It puts a lot of strain on your your outer axle shafts and the bearings. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then people wonder why they break axles. Yeah. Or shafts. Uh, it's like the last couple of days I've been seeing a lot of these guys posting about the the rift okay you know wish they would have never spent the money on it that it's a piece of junk well mm. cold and plastic do it doesn't mix oh wait till really? it warms up a little bit to get out there and and voice your opinion on it yeah you know adventure time he just bought when he had it out twice and it was a binding issue and he Bind drives binding issue binding in which way the electronic binding or the truck was the dry shaft or the uh, radio the radio wasn't binding to it really yeah he ran it the first day he got it he took it out of the box right after he got it and he ran it down in the local park by him okay ran fine and then yesterday he took it ran it for no, probably 10 minutes or so. And his steering, I think he cartwheeled it a little bit. Hmm. And the servo saver, I think, might have jumped and got locked up. So he couldn't get any right turn out of it. Okay. Got that resolved and then couldn't get the... 
truck to communicate with the radio as far as throttle or steering now. Hmm. And he had just put up a video on how to rebind it. And the first thing I'm doing is taking the radio out of mine and switching it over to my fly sky because I, it's a known issue right now with the AVC setup in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you pay you pay six uh, six uh, hundred bucks for a car. You you want it to run if it's ready to run. Uh, you want it to work with that radio. I can see people getting mad because not everybody has a fly sky or a second radio to actually put put it on their cars. Right. The other problem I see with that radio though, because they use it in the the uh, ten three and the Gladiator is if you want any kind of adjustment you have to basically sit there for about a half hour once you read the manual Mm -hmm. to adjust your trim oh yeah i know it's you don't get a menu you don't have a menu you don't have ours on screen you got to go with the numbers of beep and numbers of step that you're doing it's 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 painful and they're using the same radio for the rift okay and I, I think that's the whole issue is because they added the avc into that receiver even though it's a six channel receiver mm-hmm. they're using a three channel radio okay and i i think they dropped the ball on that because the way that they set everything up and programmed it okay You do get your your manual on how to program the ESC as far as um, your punch, your braking, all that. Okay. Matthias RC says Matthias RC says uh, RTR uh, equals ready to rebuild. <laughs> exactly. That's with any model. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if it's brand new for a manufacturer or if it's one that's been out for a while you're you're going to have an issue because it's ready to run it's mass produced they just want to get them out Mm -hmm. they have the same issue with the capra you know you have no adjustment for your endpoints for the dig servo that's why guys are burning up dig servos Mm -hmm. if you put a different radio in it you have endpoint adjustments and the servos don't get burned up yep you know, and the fly sky gt 3b or i'm sorry the gt 2b and the gt 3c they're 42 dollars from value hobby the receivers are six dollars yeah i understand you spent six hundred dollars on a truck but what's another 54 dollars Mm-hmm. when you're already that deep in just upgrade your radio for you know another $54 and you won't have an issue yep you know even the the radio links you know guys want to change over the radio links are very inexpensive they're six channel right out of the box mm-hmm Yep. You know, I, I told my wife last night if I don't have uh, a confirmation email that the labels are already created and my my rift is on the way by Tuesday, I'm canceling the order and just going to have something else sent. Okay. Because I've talked to him twice on the phone. Hmm. And, yeah, I, was, uh, I was at the hobby store yesterday and I looked at the rift real quick. And oh. um, it's it's very light. Uh, it seems to be not bad, but for the amount of power and, and the thickness of some of the plastic I saw on it, um, I, I I I'd be I I don't know if I'd buy it. It's 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 not. I don't think it, they made it strong enough to have the power that it actually has. Yeah, the power to weight ratio is a little off. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, when I, when I built my Capra, it's the same thing, but you know, why would you 
build something like that that has you know a, a four pound weight to it which you're only going to allow a 540 size can motor to fit in a skid mm -hmm. you know make provisions for a 550 or you know a 550 size can brush or a, i'm sorry a brushless motor mm -hmm. so you have choices instead of having to only deal with a 540 size can where you know you're 20 to 40 dollars on a a decent motor but you want to up your your electronics yep you know and then the micro servo the only person that has anything right now where you can upgrade from a micro to a full-size servo is Vader. When you buy their skid plate, you get the mount for a full-size servo. The the small servos that they put, I, what I hate about it is that they're they're freaking expensive. They're more expensive than their, their full-size. It's crazy. I know that Spectrum servo for this is almost $40 and you only get a two inch wire on it. Yeah. And, and here I've seen it, that serve will go for about 70, 70 bucks, like in can, in Canadian dollar. And it's hard to find. And it's, it's weird. Well, so get, maybe 65, but it's crazy. Well, now reefs has a micro 99 and you're still at a hundred dollars for a servo just for dig. Yeah. I try to stay within my budget. Okay. And out of divorce court. <laughs> Are you getting divorced or what? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, out of divorce court. Yes, I get it. I try to stay out of divorce court when I build these trucks. <laughs> yes. I stay within my means. And I, I'm not hard on my stuff. You know, it's too much time and money to take them out and just destroy them and then let them sit on the shelf because you can't afford to fix it again. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, I've got quite a bit of money sitting here on the shelves as it is, you know, but all my stuff runs. Okay. Yeah. Same as me. Well, there's only one right now that's not running, but they all run. So but mind you, I have about 60 of them. So yeah. And the re reason it's my, uh, uh, one of my Tamaya, um, wild one that's the one that's not running and i can't figure out why that friggin uh, dry shaft is popping out uh, when it's fully extended when the shock uh, the suspension uh, suspension travel uh -huh. when it's fully suspended it, it actually pops out it wants to pop out and it binds and i i i have to physically take it all apart and look at the two dry shaft to make sure that the guy didn't put the wrong dry shaft and make sure it's the right length but it's right uh, is that a regular slip joint style drive shaft or is that a dog bone style? Dog bone. Uh, yes, RC Mass Master. I did say hi to you earlier, but I can say hi to you again. Uh, would you like me to type your name to make you feel better? Wait, hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> maybe I can do this for you. Again today, so I can't see anybody in chat which doesn't bother me. I'd rather look at what I'm doing or what somebody else is doing rather than have to read. There we go. Okay. So now I got my block that goes at one end and I have to figure out... Um, I measured seven and a quarter inch um, center. So my Winnebago is actually seven inch center. So that's why my Winnebago will be able to go on the inside of the three, three other ones. Uh -huh. And on the outside, I'm a little bit wider. So seven and a quarter there and eight inch center to the tire on the outside. So that, so it's going to go from six, six and three eighths center to a tire to all the way up to eight inch center to the tire. So I should be a lot of truck to be capable to go on that bridge. Oh yeah. The 10 twos are right at nine inches. Yeah. Um, center. Yeah. 
most of that's the process basically the center so you have a lot of different travels that you can go either side so but i keep telling people look at your front tire when you're on the trail don't stand behind your truck stand in front of your truck and look at your front tire where it is and your rear will follow <laughs> it's crazy yeah, the rear is just playing shadow yep Now, how are you going to fasten the, the bamboo to those? Uh, I'm going to drill a hole. You're just going to run a piece of wire around them? No, I'm going to drill a hole in them and glue them. Glue them in the... Uh, just a sec there. Just make sure I, I am doing the right one. I think I'm okay. It's on the outside. I got to drill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill three holes, uh, four holes, and then I'm going to glue that into there. Oh, okay. So you probably weren't here earlier, but I've already well, I, did. I actually got the, the notification five minutes after you were on. So see, this one's all done with the three pieces. Right, right. So okay. let me get rid of my keyboard. This thing is friggin' long. This is about 36, 36 long, inch long right now. So basically, this is drilled in about half an inch and glued in with uh, uh, Lepage Carpenter glue. And this is uh, um, weather resistant. So it's actually made for furniture and for out outdoor, this one. Okay. So it should last pretty long. So I've done this at this end and glue it there. This is where people are going to actually going to go. And this um, is where this one from the outside to outside, I got about eight and an eighth from center. Well, if I go outside and outside, I got, yeah, eight and three eighths on the outside. And then if I go to the center one, it's seven and a quarter. And if I go to the middle one here, I got six and three eighths on the middle one center. So it's going to give me a lot of different trucks can actually go on there. But this one on the other side is going to be even more because it's got four, four of them. Um, right. The TF2, that's what, about eight and a half wide? Uh, the width, yes. It's a seven and a quarter, I think, center, center wheel. But okay. I have small wheels. And this is the other side. It has a bigger plank. So it's much bigger plank. But this is where I'm going to have four starting from here. I'm going to have four of them. And right. when you're going to get to here, then you really have to be careful when you get to the other side, because the other yeah. side only has three. It's narrower, in other words. Yeah, so you really need to think about where your tires are now. Yeah. So on that side, it's going to be three. So this whole bridge is going to be about uh, 60, about five feet long. So it's it. But I haven't figured out yet. It's probably just going to be a, a leg coming down on here. Uh, and the other thing I thought of doing is actually, because this is bamboo, it can actually twist. Right. So maybe giving it an angle. Maybe the center part can have an angle on it. Oh, a little bit of uh, off camber. That is correct. So, but the, the two other ends are not going to have a camber, but the center will have a camber or putting just one leg at this end and letting yeah. the truck of the weight do the truck of the weight have to, it, it's going to bounce like this. Oh, yeah. So, I'm keeping it open, and if people don't want it to bounce, they can put the leg under. But uh, I got a couple different ideas there. Man, I wish you weren't so far away. I'd come over and run on that. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of people that are hopefully going to come this year. Hopefully, COVID uh, opens up stuff. And well, I know they've they just announced here 16 states had already lifted the mandate. Oh yeah. And Ohio's next, as long as they keep 50 cases within 100,000 people for two weeks, okay. they'll lift the mandate. But that'll be next to impossible with the way people are. Cool. I mean, it, it, to me, that just seems like an impossible number to try to hit. Mm-hmm especially right now toward the end of winter where everybody's getting the, the urge to go outside and do a lot of stuff. 
Yep. But I'm, I'm seeing more people going out on uh, the hiking paths just for walks and even uh, mountain biking. Yeah, true. I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to drill. You can keep talking, eh? You don't have to stop talking just because I'm drilling. Just doing it here. <laughs> no, I'm just kind of looking at see if I can see chat at all, but I can't. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, so it just had a group of guys go out to Nelson's Ledges State Park where I held my event last year, and I woke up to about eight messages wanting them, everybody, uh, for me to meet them out there, and I'm still not warm enough for me to go out there. It's real muddy, still got a lot of ice. Oh, yeah? Too much of a hazard for me right now. Let me know if you hear the if you hear the drill too much. How noisy was that? That wasn't bad at all. Yeah, this microphone's pretty good to uh, not uh, pick up uh, background noise. Great. I was talking with the wife the other night. I'll, I'll probably end up getting Zoom Streamlab and uh, yeah. a couple of, their, of the uh, video apps out on the, the computer out in the living room so I can just go out there and be able to see all the chat and everything else. Okay. How are you doing it now? With a PC or with your tablet or phone? I'm on my phone. Okay. I have to test it out because I've got a a uh, a Skype camera on the the computer out there. I have to make sure everything is still working. Okay. <clears throat> then I have to remember all my passwords. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the hard part remembering everything. Yeah, I, I I could always set up a different account on that because it's a totally different email. Okay. Eventually, I'd like to get her a laptop and then bring just bring that computer in here, and then get a new TV for out there, and I can have my my uh, flat screen in here, use that for the monitor, and be able to do YouTube and whatnot while I'm working on stuff. Okay. I just need to find a, a bare spot on the wall that'll be able to take a 55 inch flat. Mm -hmm. This room's not very big. I know. Yeah. And I, I, I got to do some changes here also is especially I have like a one big screen here. I got a 24 inch my main uh -huh. screen but i want to my laptop is beside it but when i put the chat on there the chat is so small um unless i yeah. change the resolution but i want to put a, a another uh, display on the side but it's going to be portrait mode right so by having it portrait mode i can just have the chat on there and it's going to be nice and big so yeah you'll be able to extend it yep yeah, that'll be nice I didn't know that uh, RC Basher Boy went on yesterday. I'd, otherwise, I would have joined in on that. I seen him, JMH, uh, JMRC, and Javier. Yep. And then I seen Brett jumped in. I think you you jumped in for a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, I jumped in near the end, yeah. Yeah, I 
I don't remember if I have the notifications set for for Gabe's. I'm not sure. I have to go back and double check. I lost my pencil. Don't you hate that when you lose? <laughs> Uh, well, if there is anybody that is willing to buy a cross RC, which I'll show you which one that we're looking at. If anybody wants one, there is, well, I could show you right there on, on my virtual background. That truck right there is going up for a giveaway from um, a friend of mine out of Australia. Oh, yeah? It's brand new kit. It's the Cross RC SU4C. It's their flagship version. It comes with CNC aluminum wheels, the metal transmission, metal transfer case, metal axles, full 3D interior. It already has a 35 turn brushed motor. Uh, it is a hard body, comes with a full light kit. Their tires with dual stage foams. It's a very, very well designed kit. All you have to do is subscribe to his YouTube channel, his Twitch channel that he does gaming on. Okay. And I believe he's going to do $10 spots for the giveaway tickets. He had just done a giveaway last night for the Subaru Brat from um, Charisma. And this truck is up for grabs now. Cool. So, and they're, they're very, very detailed. You've got your headlights, your bumper lights, your tail lights, your dash lights. You can see the hood opens with a uh, engine cover. It now, does what's the guy's channel name? BCRC Gaming is his um, channel for Twitch. And if you go to burdens custom rc builds on facebook you can go to his facebook group and join and right now his other youtube channel is aussie rc okay and he does a lot of videos for cross rc for endpoint adjustment axle and drive shaft shimming um setting up your shocks and building your shocks correct for the trucks. Okay. He's got almost every cross vehicle that they have out right now. So he's basically their ambassador in Australia. Uh, Magnified knows who he is. He's on his channel every now and then with gaming. And how long is the draw for? When is it starting or did it already start? I believe he started the list last night. Okay. So I I will find out more details and I could share the post in the Tank RC site. If anybody wants to check that out or... Um, you can go to my group, which is Trail Crawlers RC, because I'll have the link for those groups in there also. Um, it is a five hundred and forty nine dollar kit. All you do is add your servo and radios along with your speed control. They're very smooth, very quiet and very scale looking going down the trail. Sean from Adventure RC 
and Wayne Kibler had seen him at the poker run and they loved it. Okay, cool. Uh, as a matter of fact, 11 Charlie RC, they had given one to a veteran at USTE, the same truck, but it was a blue and white two-tone. And Cody from Dixieland RC had donated the same truck also for a giveaway. I'm sorry, it, not, it wasn't a donation, it was a raffle, which... Okay, a raffle, yeah. Raised, yeah, everything that he raised for the raffle for the truck went to 11 Charlie. Okay. But they're they're a beautiful kit. They're they're super easy to to read and and follow direction. I mean, I, I've got quite a few of their their vehicles. Let me get rid of this virtual. Their PG4A. This is one of the only trucks that has two twos on it. All the other ones have the 1.9s. Okay. The HC6, which I just have to paint that. That's the one mm -hmm. that Tony from CCXRC is going to get. Okay. The SU4C, the SP4C which is the same chassis, same cab with a, a full depth bed. Battery tray is in the bed. The battery tray on this truck is actually in the back of the vehicle. This is the KR4C, which is a Lexan version. Hi, little llama Laura. How are you doing? Their VR4C. Their PG4L. This and the PG4A, both are a two-speed. Okay. This is the dually version. Leaf springs on the rear. Their SG4C. And then their T006 um, CNC Delron trailer. Tandem axle with a light kit. They're super, super nice. Yeah, uh, their trailers are nice, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And they pull, they pull really nice. They have, uh, I believe it's a one nine wheel with a super, super short tire. Okay. Metal beadlock. Uh, it comes with the aluminum diamond plate for the bed. I mean, they're, they're just really, really sharp. It, it's, it is a little more expensive than the Exceed trailer, the all metal. Yep. I believe they're 219 or 229 around versus yeah. the 110 dollars. But they they pull nice, they do hold quite a bit of weight. Mhm. Mm you no, know, also has the leaf springs on it. What I hate is is by the time it gets here in Canada, um, it's the brokerage free and the tax and all that. It really adds up to the cost of those trailers or those trucks. That's why it's right. so expensive when they start buying Canadian. Yeah. yeah I seen uh, RC Sparks had the new Cross RC, the the AT4 Emu. Okay. Up on. Uh, the auction block yesterday. Yeah, people are going crazy for the price though. It's it's yeah. You need deep pockets to buy those trucks. Yeah, they're they're just running them up because of the person that has them. Yeah. Yeah, I I get it. You know, it's RC Sparks. Mm -hmm. You know, Aaron's a he's a great guy. It just it doesn't matter who has it. They're not worth that kind of money regardless of what the truck is. 
you know, don't run it up because somebody that been in the, in the community's eye for so long with different social media platforms, don't run them up to where people can't afford to buy them. You know, just help the guy out just to move them and get rid of them. He's not out to try and make big money. Okay. RC Mass Master says, I can heat these up and straighten them up, but I think they're going to be okay. Once everything is tied up there. Now I'm just, I just glued it directly in the center. So you can see that it goes a little narrower. And now I'm actually hitting the roof. <laughs> so I can't go up any higher. But I don't want to bend it or tilt it because there's a lot of glue here. There's a lot of glue here. And I want it to settle before I do the other side. Once the other side is done, when it's actually settled a little bit, I'll put the top piece on. And this thing is about five feet tall. It's going to be cool. Hey, Frank, you can go ahead and take me off a of spotlight if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you should be off. Yeah, you are sp off spotlight. I am. Yeah, we're we're actually dual view on the stream. You have to go on your uh, your view and put it back into uh, gallery view or speaker view or whatever it is. Gallery view, I think, because I did put you on spotlight. But if I look at the stream right now, we are streaming two different windows. Uh, yeah, because your pin is not there. Because I cannot. Sp because we're only two, I cannot spotlight a video. I can only pin it, but it only pins pins it for me, which is kind of strange. Yeah, because right now you're small down in the bottom corner and I'm full screen. Oh, yeah. Here, I, I'll try to fix that. I'll stop your video and then I'll ask you to, to turn it back on. So now I'll only be there and I'll tell you to turn on back on, ask to start video. You can click on the bottom of your icon and your video is going to come back. Did that fix it? Nope. That's okay. Really? I don't know why I'm small on the bottom then. Don't know. Huh. It's just the way your view is. I don't know. I don't know. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this bridge. It's going to be cool. Oh no. Oh well. When I drilled it, I drilled it flush on one side, but then I got a kind of a drop off. I'll leave it that way. Hmm. And the nice thing about the bamboo is when it gets wet, it's going to take shape yeah. again. So it'll, it'll dry and absorb moisture and it'll, it'll keep wanting to twist in different directions. I screwed up. You didn't glue it yet, did you? I did glue it, but I just took it apart uh, because when I drilled it, um, I drilled it on the bottom of the piece of wood and it should have been on top of the piece of wood. So there's kind of a drop off and I don't want it to be a drop off. Oh, so I just drilled it on the wrong side. That's all. I'll just redrill it. And I wasn't careful enough. So now I got to clean the glue off the edge because I got a lot of messy goop. That's what we call for future development. That's it. what happened when you do a live you don't concentrate on what you're doing you're concentrating on what you're showing yeah <laughs> yeah you're looking at chat and everything else yeah yeah it's funny because when i go on uh, and watch the johnny burden you know everybody they complain so much because they say oh i don't i don't play games i don't play games well I don't play video games either, but what we do is we talk a lot more about RC than anything. Okay. And it gets him so distracted that he can't concentrate on his game. Mm. Which it, it's funny. 
Well, it's just like when you build something, you build a video or an RC live, you end up talking a lot and you end up looking at what people chat and you end up, and it takes so much longer to do a build when you're doing it live. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You lose track of where you're at. Yep. Let's see if I can do something with this. There's a nice curve on my. There's a nice curve on this bridge. I could almost do a bow and arrow with this one. <laughs> uh, once it's all built, I'll take my heat gun to it and heat them up and bend them the way I want. I actually thought about going to get more of these. Um, if I go and get more of these, maybe I can build another one like this, but put it this way to go up and actually put little tiny pieces going up to help people go up. So it'd be, it would look really nice if I actually did that. Oh yeah. Kind of like little trusses going across that they can yeah. bite into. Yeah, little trusses they can go across and it's going to make it, everything look so, so cool. I don't, I don't have to make it steep. I could make the dismount a little steeper. Right. But uh, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of work if I do this though, with all, and especially if I use a wire to tie everything down. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're going to wind up with finger cramps and arthritis real fast. Hey, Kurtz RC, how are you doing? Side by side? Yeah, we are side by side. I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, if you look at the piece of wood and see how I actually put it on top of the wood. Here it's actually on top, closer to the top and there's a big gap on the bottom. Yeah. On the other side, I drilled the bottom of it and it should have been drilled on top. You can really tell here that it's actually drilled. Oh, wait, there's more of a gap here. There's a big gap, but on the other side, I drilled it on the wrong side. I drilled, drilled it on the bottom. And like my dad used to say, we're not building a church, so it doesn't matter. You'll never see it. Yeah. My dad used to say that also. We're in construction. So this is not a church. It's good enough. Like it's a quarter inch off or whatever. Keep going. Keep going. Right. Now we, where I'm at, we usually say we can't see it from my house. So just keep going. Yeah. You won't see that from the moon. Right. making a mess on my table. I, I still have to try to come up with a way to cut this piece of nylon that I, I need for this uh, low center of gravity chassis that I have for my 10-2. Oh, yeah? I was going to take it to work yesterday and cut it and machine the center down, but that didn't happen. I ended up not going into work. I did something to my back. 
Mm -hmm. I ended up having to go to the chiropractor. But uh, if I try to do it here, I'm, I'm going to make a mess everywhere. I, I just don't want that flying everywhere and getting embedded into the carpet. Mm -hmm. I'll figure it out, though. I always come up with something. Sure you will. If there's a will, there's a way. Yep. Score and this will take forever. It's a half inch thick. Just half inch. The only downfall of being in an apartment. Are you in an apartment or in a house? A two bedroom ranch style apartment. Okay. Limited on how many tools I could actually have because there's really nowhere to keep anything. Okay. I mean, I, I do have a full attic, but we've got a lot of stuff up there from when we had moved from our other one. Mm -hmm. We had a fire about five years ago where we were at. Oh, yeah. And they just moved us across the parking lot to another unit. So we've got a lot of boxes up there still from when we were in our old apartment. Plus I've got, oh God, probably 25 RCs up there in boxes okay. and in uh, field bags for racing. Now you used to do a lot of racing, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Three to four days a week. Oh yeah, yeah. It was driving me crazy. <laughs> and why did you quit racing? Is it because they were always changing the rules or changing different motor type, or what was it? Uh, I basically got out of on road and off road racing because the cost of the nitro fuel was getting too expensive. Okay, you were nitro. Okay. Yeah, when I first started, it was roughly thirty seven dollars a gallon, and I was running O'Donnell thirty percent fuel. And by the time I got out of it, it was in, I want to say the mid fifties per gallon. And I would have three gallons per week that I was going through. Okay. So it was going to be roughly about $160 a week just for fuel to race. I'd have one night of on-road racing and two nights of off-road. Then we got into electric indoor with the 118 scale mini tees and that took a lot more time. So I, now I'm at four days a week racing. I'd, I'd have to rush home, get everything and then make another 45 minute drive south from me. Be there till midnight, one o'clock, get home and unload, get back in the house, try to get to bed and Try to get up in the morning. But it started getting really competitive. I was doing it more just for the fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, too many people thought it was a lifestyle. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to be part of that. It's a hobby. It's not a lifestyle. You don't make money at it. Mm -hmm. You're definitely not going to make money at it to survive today yeah uh sponsorship you're still not making a lot of money the only thing you're actually doing is saving money if you have a full ride which mm -hmm. it still costs you in the long run mm -hmm. just not as much yeah a lot of people don't realize that but there's a lot of companies that even though they sponsor you you still have to buy stuff from them like you get it at cost but you still have to buy it at cost it's not full sponsorship right. right so you do have to be careful 
Yeah, they they give you certain stuff, or they'll give you price breaks. Yeah, but you're still paying the shipping, and if there's something that you need other than what your sponsor has, you have to buy it. Mm-hmm. Whether yep. it's a motor, if you're running nitro, exhaust, header pipes, fuel, glow plugs, igniters, and igniters get expensive. Oh, yeah. You know, igniters at $25 a piece, you, you have to have at least three or four of them. One that you can put in your pocket at least, and mm-hmm. one that'll run off of a just a six volt uh, acid battery. And then you need the starter boxes to go with it. You need the batteries to run the starter boxes. I mean, it, it it's a lot of it's a lot of work mm-hmm. to get sponsored and keep a sponsor. Yep. That's why. I, when JMH, myself, and uh, a couple other guys here local had been picked up by what we thought was something legit, we were waiting to see what we had to actually put in as far as money. And he said that there was no money out of our pocket. All we had to do was basically promote him okay and uh he was gonna send us batteries and servos tires bodies whatever we wanted and we waited for about two months for our sponsor box to be shipped out and it turned out that he was a scam after I found it out. Hmm. I started talking to the guys on the side and uh, some of the guys actually spent money with him and never received one product. Wow. So he was just using it as a cover to, to make money instead of working to support his drug habit. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of strange people out there. It takes all kinds of people to run a world tour to crazy and and i i should have seen the the warning when all of it first came up because he was looking for two people from every state Hmm. and sponsors don't do that sponsors they don't want to just say hey you know if you want to be sponsored let me know just send me an email and i'll have you on the team okay they want to be out there they want to see you at multiple events placing it at least the top 10 Mm -hmm. and they really want to see you podium so they know that you're serious about it and that they have somebody on their team that that can compete on yep and it, it, it was it was just kind of weird and then I did some more research on him and found out that it was a scam that's been going on with him for quite a few years. And when I, when I basically posted in uh, at RC Facebook okay. thing for the scammers, I, I didn't know that, but uh, Matthias RC says, haven't decided yet what to do with all my nitro cars and boat uh, because of now you need a permit for the government for storing nitro at home. And that's if it's over 16% nitro. Is that true? Is that the case? It? I don't know where he lives, but in the States, is that true for you? No. No, I don't think in Canada either. I don't think it, you have that rule, but I don't have nitro, so I don't know if it, it is no, a rule. I know that they're trying to get away from running any higher than a 20% nitro. Okay. But uh, depending on what nitro vehicles they are, I'd hold on to them, just put them in a storage mode, You know, make sure that they have plenty of after-run oil in them. 
and uh, just wrap the cylinder head with uh, a little bit of um, maybe white lithium grease and a Ziploc bag to keep it from getting condensation and oxidizing. I have I have two RCs from Thunder Tiger that are nitro that they got the guy had it on books like every week you receive a book and you receive an RC part. Uh, yeah. I have all the parts I have all the books and they're there one is almost all complete there's maybe 10 books left to actually open up and finish the truck. It's a monster uh -huh. truck. Um, and the other one's an on road car. And I have all the books in there from Thunder Tiger. And I'm, I'm debating, do I finish them or do I try selling them or of how they are? Like, I'm still debating what I'm going to do with those. Yeah, Thunder Tiger back then was a, it was an off-brand of HPI. Yeah, okay. Um, what I would do is I'd finish them because they've, they've never been run, right? Nope, never been run. One is all complete. You can actually crank the engine. My brother checked it out because he knows about nitro. He goes, yeah, it looks... Uh, it looks good. Like there never been in any oil or anything in it or never have the tank is completely empty. Never ran. Yeah. I would finish them and just make sure that you just drop some after run oil in them or, uh, you know, some WD 40 down in the, the glow mm -hmm. warmer and in the, to the carburetor and just set them aside. Cause there's going to be somebody that's going to want them that is willing to pay top dollar. Yeah, true. Because nitro, it's been going to the wayside for quite a while now because electric has taken over so much. Yeah. That was the other reason I quit racing is, you know, nobody wanted to go to the nitro races in Marshall because okay. they were worried about getting burned or nitro fuel and, and dirty all over themselves and, you know, they said electric racing is a lot cleaner. Well, only if you're running inside on carpet. Mm -hmm. You still have all the debris and whatnot if you're racing outdoors. I just like the the sound and the smell. That's true. The sound is kind of cool. You know, when you're up there and you're in a race and then you hear all that, it's like a like a shot of adrenaline. I still have all mine. I just, matter of fact, I've got two of them sitting in here right now. I've got a Nitro TC3 and a Kyosho 777 Inferno Truggy. And then my my other two are uh, HPI Savage 21 that is fully modified and uh, Kyosho 777 Inferno Buggy. Those are both up in the attic in my race bags. I don't sell, I just collect. Oh yeah? And sometimes I forget what I have. But I've got so many of them anymore. Eventually uh, I'll start weeding them out. I think I figured out what I'm going to do for the center part. It's going to be cool. Uh, the two two ends are going to be fixed and the center part I'm going to put a two by two right in the center I'm going to drill a hole with a drill uh, put a screw with the drill cut the head of the screw off and then the center is going to be a little lower so when you're going to get on that bridge it is going to sag but when you get to the center if your truck is not balanced it will go camber yeah it will go on one side or the other so it should be cool nice Yeah, that, that'll be tricky. Mm -hmm. It's all about balance. Yeah. Because I've been thinking of doing kind of a balancing truck or track or bridge, uh, like on either on a bolt uh, and just putting a, a board and, and maybe two feet. And you got to cross that two feet board and keep your balance of your truck, like make it wide so people don't realize where the center is. Yeah, And if it does tip, it will maybe go like 45 degree or maybe 30 degree. I want it to go tip enough that it will fall off or roll off. So yeah. um, that's something I, I want to do and try. It's the balancing board. Yeah, make it where it gives them a little pucker factor. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, that, that would be something really cool to implement into a course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to build a, a course out here and, uh, that kind of went to the wayside. Me and a, a buddy had a falling out on it, but I had already had the design in my head and on paper how I was going to do everything. And I was going to have a rope bridge. I was going to have a suspension bridge and uh, a couple different seesaws. What's the what difference bridge? between a rope bridge and a suspension bridge? Suspension bid bridge is with the slats to actually hold it up but it will sway where you it's like you have a road, but it's all suspended by cable and, and tubing across the top. Okay. And then the rope bridge would be just like a, uh, a five eighths, um, right. style rope. Okay. Green frog yeah. says he believes that Matthias RC is in Sweden. And he says, good afternoon, all. Green Frog. Hey, Green Frog. Going good. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, that seems kind of strange that they they have a, a band on how much fuel that you can have. Yeah. So there, the whole thing is done. Now I got to wait till it dries and then figure out what I'm going to do for the on-ramp and off-ramp and to get on and off. I think I should go to Kane Tire and buy more. <laughs> so I can actually do the uh, the ramp like a bamboo also. It would look cool. Yeah. Yeah, that that's going to be tricky. Mm-hmm. Especially if, if you're going to have it in an area where you've got some dirt and your tires are going to hold some dirt in it. Yep. I think I know where I'm going to put it. Uh, there's an area on my trail where uh, I do have a kind of a bridge, but it's been getting old and I've done with logs. Uh, I think I'm going to take that one off and put this one in there instead. So... Uh, Matthias RC says the new rule for nitro is for all countries in the e, uh, EU and it's for to prevent terrors, terrorism really and wow. homemade bombs stuff huh. they have oh. regulated all that uh, years back before it was 24% 25% interesting Yeah, it's just getting so expensive though. And mm -hmm. there's a there's not a lot of hobby shops that carry nitro fuel anymore either. Nope. I know you can't you can't order it online and have it shipped to your door. Okay. Like you used to. You can order it and you can have it shipped to um your employer to, to where you work at a workplace. Yeah. Yeah. Or, um, say if, if it goes through FedEx or UPS or DHL, you would actually have to go to their facility and pick it up and, um, sign the hazmat paperwork. Cause it's actually considered as dangerous goods. Yes. Flammable liquid. Yeah, for a while it was scary for lipos also. They started putting a lot of restriction, but they seem to slack down a bit on that. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're starting to get laid back on that, which is nice. Oh, we watched uh, a couple of the Kevin Talbot videos last night just to, to analyze the do's and don'ts and okay. it was one of his videos where he actually took a 3s and a 4s lipo clamped them down in a radial saw and cut them in half 
did he actually do that? Because I was mentioning that to, I can't remember who I was saying that, but I told him, I want to do that this summer. I actually want to do that. And uh, somebody thought, said, really? Like, I go, yeah. And were his yeah. battery actually charged, fully charged? Yeah, he made sure that they had a full charge on him before okay. he put him in there and cut him. And he did it outside. Uh, it, they were brand new batteries. He put a full charge to him and he says, Oh, let's go outside and see what happens if you cut them in half with a circular saw. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have a, I have a few batteries and the, they do have a charge and they're, some of them have a dead cells and some of them are just not working anymore. So, and I don't want to charge them up. Uh, right. They are aside right now. So there's a couple different tests of, uh, that I want to do to actually, uh, and one of them was go, go through the bandsaw with it. Um, huh. But uh, we'll see. I might still do it. Yeah, he, he clamped them down in the base of his radio. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw the clip. I saw the, the clip part, that the, the start, but I did not click on it. I said, should I look at it? Should I not look at it? Uh, okay. Because of all the, the thing with Aaron and RC Spark, I did not watch a video from him yet. Mind you, I was not watching a lot of his videos because I find – there's a lot of clickbait on there that what he does with his titles yes. and what he does and all the way it, to, to me, it's, it's, it's more not, it's, it's not about letting people know about RC. It's, it's, let's see how far or high we can make it jump and if we can break it and all that, it's not, it's not about education on his part. It's, it's how much fun can we have with it and how can we destroy it? That's what I don't like. Exactly. Yeah, what he did with that saw is he took zip ties and zip tied the trigger on and the safety, duct taped a stick to the top of the saw. Okay. All he did was plugged it in to turn it on and stood back about six feet and lowered the saw into it. He had a car three feet away from the saw when he was doing this. So when it cut through, it, it didn't go off right away. The piece that had fell was, it still had the battery leads and the balance ports on it. So it's laying on the ground and it, it's finally starting to glow. And, and then it just turned into a big smoke show and then a big ball of fire. And he just, that guy turns my stomach the way he does stuff. <laughs> yeah. What I wanted to do with an axe, take a, a, a hacks and just go like real quick with the hacks and actually do a slow motion. Um, yeah. th that I still want to do it. I'm going to put it on the big log, uh, put some screws on each side to make sure it stays there um, and put a couple GoPros, a couple cameras, a slow motion camera and, and just see what's going to happen when you hit it with an axe. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'll get a good effect because with the axe, it's going to start pushing all the cells together and short them out. Yeah. With the saw, it just took a little bit more because it, it was shorting out between the blade and all the cells on each side. So it took a little longer for it to heat up. Mm -hmm. I've seen guys shoot them. I've seen guys drive nails through them, um, shoot them with a bow and arrow. Yeah. Uh, you know, different ways to just look to see how dangerous they are. Well, I don't really know how dangerous they are. You don't have to show me. And another thing I want to do is, is uh, I'll do that outside on the table or somewhere um, with my, my next door neighbor has a, a metal bench. So it's actually a table that's made of metal. So I actually want to go in his garage and, and, or take the table outside and actually peel a lipo battery in other words here's a lipo battery this is the different layers of a lipo battery and this is how it's connected and just like take it all apart one piece at a time uh, without making it blow up in other words right and just make sure you have a, a bucket of sand yeah yep that's the only thing that's gonna put it out yeah that i know you gotta because it is a electrical fire it is a um uh how do they say that? A chemical fire. Yes. Yeah. When I was racing the 118 scale mini tees, one of the guys had overcharged a battery. It was just a 2S. Okay. And uh, it started to swell up. Really? 
So he had carried it outside just from the, the lead. And as soon as he got outside it, it had swelled up enough where it pulled the, the bars to each cell apart and they had twisted and touched and it went off in his hand and he dropped it into a metal bucket mm -hmm. and started throwing water at it and throwing water at it made it even worse. Of course. And we told him just grab a handful of dirt off the ground right there and just start dousing it with the dirt. Mm -hmm. Cause if that would have happened inside, we'd have had a, a real mess, mm -hmm. especially if he'd have been racing with it. You know, a brand new carpet with all the, the fresh glue underneath it, that the building would have went up like a tinderbox. Yep. That's the one thing that, that spooks me a little bit about um, with all the crawling and, and falling real far off of a rock when you're out with these lipos, with them actually breaking loose from the Velcro and, and getting smashed in between. Mm -hmm. so i don't want to be the one to, to cause a, a major fire somewhere well it's just like those basher people uh basher people i'm kind of one of them but uh if you put a basher battery if you buy a basher battery please please buy a hard pack don't buy a soft pack because right. you're going to bash it hard on that car and that battery is going to go like it's going to want to hit one side or the other of the car or when it actually <coughs> <clears throat> when it actually lands, it, it takes a hit. And and if you if you have a soft pack, yes, they do put foam at the end. They do have some protection, but a hard pack is so gonna protect it more. And that's why some of the car are blowing up because people are are doing speed runs or they're doing a bashing with a soft pack, and then they they go, oh my, it's dangerous, and my car started on fire. Well, hello. Yeah, yeah they don't take into consideration. But I know the, the hard packs are hard to find uh, the right battery for the crawlers and yep. the scale trucks. And I mean, they're not moving fast, which, mm -hmm. you know, hence the reason they're crawlers. Yep. But it's just that initial drop. Yep. Is what, you know, worries me at times. Because a lot of people, they, they put a piece of Velcro on the battery and put a piece of Velcro on the battery tray. Yeah. Well, that's not always going to hold it. Nope. <laughs> I, I make sure I, when I put mine in, I strap them down pretty tight. Oh, shoot. Hey, we're up to nine people watching and uh, Dirk V is there. Matthias O.C. is still there. Curtis. Um, Green Frog was there a while back, but there's a bunch of people there right now. It went up. Maybe because we started talking about lipos. People are just realizing and saying, oh, what the heck's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's one time I tried, um, one of my lipos was uh, actually dead uh, because it went down too low. Mm -hmm. It's actually a 3S. And I wanted to revive it. So I put it on the charger under NIM. And then I said, I'm going to stay there about a minute or uh, just about a minute or two. So right. I started doing that. And all of a sudden my wife calls me. So I go upstairs and she asked me something and then I start doing it. I completely forgot my battery was on NIM and actually charging. Uh, about an hour and a half later, I realized, oh. and I think in my head, I go, shit, my battery. <laughs> and I went downstairs and this was on my table and uh, the battery was just on the bag was not in the bag was on the bag uh -huh. and I look at the charger the charger the charger says complete and I look at the battery friggin battery was like puffed up so bad it was really puffed up and I'm go and I'm there shit and then I unplug the battery real quick and I take the battery and the battery was hot. And I take the battery and I go and I run upstairs kind of walking fast. My wife looks at me and goes, what's going on? And then I take the battery and the whole thing and I just throw it outside and I turn around to her and I go, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost took the house on fire, but no, nothing. Everything's fine. Just there's a problem with the batteries. That's all. Yeah. I've got a, a 2S reaction pack. It, it's a hard pack that one of the cells had dropped lower than the rest. Okay. And 
I don't want to try that because it, it'll be the same thing. I'll get okay, called cool. by my wife or something will go on. I'll get distracted and I'll forget about it. Hmm. Uh, hello, off access 3d he says, hello, um, here, uh, hiding in the background, chilling, making coffee and working on his prints. So he does a lot of 3d prints. Uh, he's doing 3d, uh, some, uh, R2D2 drones and C3PO and a bunch of other battle drones. He's making little tiny ones and big ones. Like one is actually life size. It's kind of cool what he does. Uh, was he not on here once before? Not sure. Might have. It was either on on yours or maybe JMH. I I could have sworn I seen somebody that had done that. Mm -hmm. They had a, an R2-D2 that was about a foot and a half tall. Yep. Well, he's got one that's about a foot and a half. He's got another one that's about four feet tall. Um, oh. He's got a bunch of them. Lots of fun. Yeah. yeah see, I wore the appropriate shirt today. Yeah. I got out of bed for this. <laughs> And I'm wearing a GCM racing and my wife looked at it and like here it's a brown spot. And she goes, is it dirty? I go, oh no, that's stained from the deck. Because I actually wore this when we were on the staining the deck. So there's a couple of stained spots. I guess the paint has to go on the deck and not on the shirts. <laughs> well, if you don't get it on yourself, you're not doing it right. Yeah, that's it. You're not putting enough paint. Off axis says yuppers, Dennis. Yeah, uh. We went over to my son-in-law's yesterday for my granddaughter's birthday, and he's practicing with the silk screen kit. Oh, yeah? And uh, he made a couple t-shirts for the kids, you know, with like a that Punisher style skull with the long okay. jaw on it. And he did the Batman logo for his nephew yeah, that and whatnot. That's true. The other day when we were doing a multi-stream with uh, Rob and Sam, you know, I was doing a multi-stream. I was streaming the same, their stream on my stream. Uh, he was there with them. Yes. So. Yeah, I thought so. But uh, uh, him and I got to talking about it and he's going to make me up a couple of shirts before I go to Stone Mountain. Okay. So I'm going to have my YouTube channel on there and my Facebook group. Cool. So I'll be hey. able to promote myself finally. Hey, Asgard. Yeah, we're still there. And Brian uh, just logged on with us. Is that Brian Taft? Can you hear me? Can hear you. Where are you at? Can't see you. Oh, I am sore. Yes. No, we can. I can see you. Just swipe, swipe your... Uh, yeah, I didn't see the other dot show up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, doing, where man? is my uh, where is my um, my camera? I don't know. It should be on your device. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's you easy swipe, for you to, if, that's easy for you to say. Are you using a device or a PC to connect? No, to? I'm using my PC. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, we can see. I see all the trucks behind you. Yep. Oh, you can see the trucks behind me? Yep. Yep. Well, I should be sitting in front of the camera now. Yeah. You can't see yourself? Okay. There. I don't know. This is weird. <laughs> huh. How are you? We're doing good. I'm sorry. I just jumped in a little late. I was, uh, That's good. Taking yeah, was... a nap, to be honest with you. I, I had some 30 inch bamboo sticks, a skur stick, skew stick, skur, skew. Uh -huh. and I made this bridge real quick. So that it's actually six feet long. So, uh, it's going to be a new bridge on my, uh, on my course. So it's going to be Sweet. cool. Sweet. Yeah. We're, uh, trying to hang out, getting ready to go to a, a lacrosse game here in 30 minutes. So okay. wanted to pop in and say hello. Oh, thanks for dropping in. Hello. Uh, where are you at? About uh, in the state somewhere? Um, yeah, in Durham, Chapel Hill area, right in the cool. center of North Carolina, basically. Cool. So, yeah, it's been nice. The weather's weather has taken a turn for the uh, 
nest now. So some of our trees even have uh, buds on them now, which is yeah. great. I already got some buds. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, the sun has really been warming up. Like here this week, it's going to be in the minus, uh, I mean, nine degrees and 10 degrees, which is going to be nice and hot. So, <laughs> yeah. How much snow do you still have on the ground? Oh, we still have about two or three, uh, at least three to some spots, four feet of snow. Like there's still a lot of snow on the ground. Yeah, that keeps, that keeps the temperature down. Yeah, we've got just piles from the plows. That's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be in the mid 60s by Wednesday. Wow. So we're going to have a heat wave come through and then it's going to cool down again. Yeah. Hmm. Which I'm I'm fine with that. That just means that spring is right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to do another event here and I'm actually debating on inviting some guys over and taking snowshoes and packing the the snow because it's actually melting therefore it's packing. And to see if I, we can do a, a winter event and just like go on the snow and try to go through with the snow. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Since it's warming up, it won't be as cold on the hands. So I'm just, it's just, it's so tiring with the snowshoes and making the tracks and yeah. like, it's, it's hard on the body, especially with me. I like I'm, I'm overweight a little bit and not in shape. So, but it will put me in shape, but to do it, you need to be in shape. So. It's kind of a slow. Yeah. Every Baby steps. I'm out of shape. They look at me and they tell me round is a shape. So <laughs> it doesn't work that way. No. It really doesn't work that way. Is that just a background for you, Dennis? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was uh the first event that I did for Eleven Charlie that that was underneath my tent with all my trucks. Cool. Oh, at the park. Yes. Yeah, if the if the borders open up this year, I want to try to do a couple different events in the states and things like that. So we'll see how thing goes. Are you, are you still on lockdown? Uh, well, Canada and US are like I yeah. I can't, well, you can go to the US, but it has to be like for a good reason, and I don't think having fun is a good reason. Yeah, probably not. No, although it's not good for the mind. So yeah. But did, if you, did they lift if, the mandate by you yet, Brian, or no? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said, Dennis. Did they lift the mandates by you guys yet, or no? Um, you know, he just our governor just reacted. Uh, we can have larger gatherings. Um, we can have 30 percent in outdoor facilities based on the seating capacity, and 15 percent for indoor facilities. So the hurricanes last. Thursday, uh -huh. had stands in the fans for the first time. Really? Yep. Yeah. I opted out. I, I have a mini season ticket plan, but I opted out. I, I'm actually getting my first COVID shot. I was waiting to get that before I start introducing myself to that type of event. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, off axis 3d says dennis i've been waiting at the park for everyone since 6 a.m where where have you been brian p or brian and then smiley face with a finger and a finger a thong sticking out <laughs> what park are you waiting at <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, he's waiting exactly. at the wrong part park so funny yeah i think those guys that went this morning are regretting Mm. You know, it's a big thaw. It's yeah. Really sloppy. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, there's still quite a bit of ice on the leaves in the woods right where we trail. And, you know, when it runs down the rocks, those, those rocks get really slick. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't want to take that chance. You know, I'm nope. older and you know, a little more frail than I used to be. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I'm wondering this year. Um, when people come to the event, do I have to make them sign a waiver? In other words, because they are going on a private property back there. It's not my property; it belongs to somebody else. But if somebody does get hurt, like who's responsible? It is my event, but it is a somebody else's property. So, like, 
I, yeah, I just don't want people to start suing and it might happen. It might not, but. I'd we'll have see. a waiver because there's always that one person. Hmm. Yeah. Some person you don't know. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it works now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, like toward the end of the summer, you know, me and a few guys were, were over at, at Nelson's running and, uh, Oh. We were taking some picture and some video on a, on a rock that we've crawled numerous times. And um, one of the guys had his class one truck on there with the hard body. And his truck is really heavy. It's about 14 pounds. Oh, yeah. And now I get the uh, Alifax's comment. I read it wrong. It says Dennis has been waiting at the park for everyone since 6 a.m. So he says, not me. Dennis has been according to his background. Yeah. I mean, look at all the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so look, like, look how nice the green the grass is and look at all the sun. Like, come come and have fun with Dennis. Right. I, I mean, I got everything on the table. I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, I was at the base of the rock and I had my left foot underneath me. My right foot was up on the edge of the rock. And he had rolled down a couple of times. I caught him. And the last time I had moved my foot placement on the rock a little bit more. And, uh, where I was standing behind me, it was about a five foot drop. And the truck was about another five to six foot above me. Well, he had went go, he, he had started climbing up and went to side hill. It, it started sliding. So I just put my hands under it. Next thing I know is he's rolling and then my foot slipped and I went head first right into the corner of the rock. Hmm. <clears throat> Flip my head open and they all looked at me and just kind of like deer in headlights. And uh, one of my buddies actually stepped up and asked if I had my first aid kit with me that he bandaged me up. Oh, yeah. So I, I had a, a nice gash across my forehead. It, it actually was down to the bone. Hmm. I saw a, a really bright light when that happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that lit me up pretty good. So when it starts getting cold and, and wet, I stay away from there. It's too much of a hazard. But we're going to make the best of it this year with the events. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping to do two for sure there and two at a different facility for uh, some other groups that I'm in that are out in that direction. So I can raise money for 11 Charlie and SDP Ridgeline. Mm -hmm. so I think the ones that I'm going to do for Ridgeline are going to be uh, autism awareness for his, okay. his son that just passed. Help him out. Have you decided a date yet, Dennis? For your first? Uh, the first one is going to be either June 12th or 13th. That's Saturday or Sunday. I just have to look at the weather a week prior to see what the pattern is going to be. Okay. It's pretty easy to read the weather pattern here. If it's raining where I'm at, it's sunshine over there. Okay. So I could drive out of here in a, in a downpour, get there, and it could be... 85 degrees oh, yeah. and not a cloud in the sky. That's a good hour drive for me. Well, I'm getting hungry. It's yeah. 104 here. So I think I'm going to cut the stream. Um, kind of did finish my, 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 uh, my bridge. I got a couple other things to figure out and um, thanks for watching guys. And uh, We'll talk to you guys later. Uh, thanks, Brian, for popping in. And thanks, Dennis, for oh, popping in. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. Cool. Uh, guys, uh, keep having fun. Keep those batteries charged and go out there and have some fun and break something. Because if you're not breaking anything, you're not having any fun. Talk to you guys later. See ya. Take care, guys.